All I can tell you is that I, by the time I was 12 or 13, was going to be an actress. And my family were very opposed to me being an actress. Like any other family, they didn't think it was necessarily the good career to go into young Finley. But we worry about us. Um, but having said that, she said, if you can get into na the National Youth Theatre, which back then was, I know it's still very, um, uh, very successful now, but back then it was really, Helen Mirren was in the year above me and, and all sorts of fabulous people. It was, it was sponsored by the Daily Mail, which then was quite a good newspaper. Um, and my mother said, if you can get into the National Youth Theatre, and they were taking 13 girls, um, and uh, out of something like 600 and something, I auditioned, I got in. She said, if you can get in, we'll be behind you and support you. So I got into the Youth Theatre, and then it, then I went through the Youth Theatre, I went to drama school, you know, it was always what I was going to do. The people at time forgot was, um, it was just before Superman, and it was with an actress called Dana Gillespie, Doug McClaw, who was a big star back then, and Patrick Wayne, who was the son of John Wayne, for, for want of anything other than to say about him. And um, it was, for me, the, the best experience ever. It was uh, shot in the Canary Islands. They couldn't afford, well, you saw the dinosaur's tail. They couldn't afford the whole dinosaur, so they just took the tail <laughs> to the Canary Isles. And then they had a man who was the monster, who was at the front going, like this. But I mean, we had so much fun. It was absolutely brilliant. And uh, many years later, when people talked to me and said, when were you last really, really, really having a good time or happy? And I said, well, I think it was probably on the people at Time Forgot because we were a, a, a small group. And you know, back then, um, nobody said this is a low budget film. It was just a, it wasn't a studio film. So I, I since realized it was a low budget film, but it, it was great fun. Um, and I, you know, I can remember that the, the um, they'd come in and they would slop, they'd get a thing of green paint and slop the green sloppy paint around the, the nostrils of the pterodactyls or whatever. So, uh, and everything was cardboard. Hopefully the acting wasn't too cardboard, but it was great. And whilst I was doing that, um, they were auditioning in England for Superman. So I was tucked away doing my dinosaur acting in the Canary Islands, and all these other actresses were going through the mill trying to get uh, the role of Ursa. And I came back um, after, uh, from being on location, tested, went and met with the producers, as you know the story, I'm not going to go through it again. But the bottom line is I finished, people at time forgot on the Thursday and I started Superman on the Friday. There were three of us, it seems, for the final role. The actress in front of me was an Italian movie star, came in a long fur, fur coat, very glamorous. I came along being very English in my leotard and my hair tied back and my little pumps, you see, very keen. And I got off the, I was still on the window, so I jumped off. And as I flew, and I was about 40 foot up, one of the crew shouted up to me, here, darling, you've got no chance. The last bird flew without any knickers on. <laughs> and it transpires that the Italian actress ahead of me had got up there and flown without any underwear. So she flew <laughs> over the producers and directors and like, whoa! And then there's me coming along, all hale and hearty in English. But hey, I got the role and I kept my knickers on. On Superman, we were, were uh, one of the big sequences was on the back lot at Pinewood Studios, which they had yet to discover was built on an underground lake. So it was freezing cold, it was icy and very cold. And I, of course, as probably you will remember, wore very little in Superman. I had that organza costume with slits up the side, so there was nowhere for anything warm, except my top half. And I was given a mink-lined brassiere. So it was commonly known that I had the hottest bits in the business. <laughs> Richard Donner was very Californian, very laid back, very, it doesn't matter if you don't get it right because, you know, I'm here for you, honey. Richard Lester, who was a brilliant director, but not one of the most, didn't have the greatest sense of humor as far as I went, so he was quite stern. And he used three or four cameras a lot of the time, and it was all about the technique with Richard Lester. So Richard Lester said, right, you come in, you do this, you do that, you do. And I can remember thinking, God, I don't know that I can, but he had such a way about him that it worked. For instance, the, um, the sequence where I'm uh, uh, throwing, oh, the manhole cover, 
It was about three or four in the morning. I was freezing cold, except for the yeah. yeah, thank you. Uh, I was cold. I came on the set, and he said, "Okay, I want you to walk up. I want you to hit that piece of wood. I want you to step on it, slap it up. It'll catch the manhole cover, catch it, throw it, and hit Superman in the stomach." And I can remember thinking, "I don't know if I can do that." But he was so positive that I could that I did. Now, if it had been Richard Donner, he probably would have said to me, "Honey, you know, it doesn't matter, and have a go." And it, that that doesn't work so well for me because I'm I, I need that that really you can do it approach, and that's what Richard Esler had for me. Terence, I give full credit to, uh, and always have done. Uh, it was he had recently, well, within the last two or three months, had come from India, where he'd been spent I think about nine or ten years in an ashram, was very centered, very focused, very quiet, very still. <coughs> Everything, <coughs> contrary to me, so you can see I'm a big old fish. So Terry was brilliant because Terry was the one that said, we need, as villains, we need to be a little bit different. And one of the things that he came up with, although the other night, well not the other night, last year when I saw him at the BFI, he had no knowledge of this, but it, it is definitely him. He said, we need to move in unison. We have to do something that makes us a little bit different from all the other people. Well, we are aliens. And so one of the things we did was move in unison, um, which if you look at, I mean, I marvel at it because I'm such a fidget. But we do, we're very still, we move together. Um, and he, I give him full credit for that. Um, that was his specific note. And just being very focused and, and centered and, and brilliant. And he drank mint tea. I've never met anybody who drank mint tea. So it's brilliant. <laughs> the producers thought that it would be, in the little clip we saw, the producers thought, because my hometown, I'm born and bred Stratford-on-Avon, they thought it would be rather cute that Pamela Lynch went back to Stratford-on-Avon. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, Pamela Lynch, the episode was screened about two, I'm living in LA, uh, 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 I came home to visit my mother and I was walking down the main street with my poor old mum with my little hen basket, going to Boots, I remember it well, and a coachload of Americans arrived, as they do in Stratford, saw me, Pamela Lynch, and all hell broke loose in Stratford-on-Avon, because two weeks before, they had heard that Pamela Lynch had gone to Stratford-on-Avon, <laughs> and it has taken us years in Stratford to, 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 to quell that, that whole sort of story that Pamela Lynch is living in, in a manor house outside of Stratford, because of course, my sister then went on to open a little delicatessen, and it was decided that it would be a good idea if I came back from LA and I'd get her a bit of press, which I did, and we got into People magazine, this big article, Soap Star Works in Shop, with a headline. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't exactly what had happened, but it got her press. And then, of course, the shop was inundated by Americans looking to see Pamela Lynch, who had her comeuppance because she was working behind the bacon slicer. <laughs> but I didn't, I wasn't.